Hi, my name's Georgie and I'm the Social Media Manager at Dermatica. Hi, I'm Dan from the clinical team at Dermatica. And today we're going to be watching some trending skincare videos from around the internet and we're going to see what Dan thinks. So this first video is probably for people who are thinking about acne treatments and ways okay. you can deal with pimples. So mm -hmm. let's see what you think. Okay, um, oh, this is a no. There's a chance that you can actually invert the sebum that's in the acne and make it a whole lot worse. I know like how satisfying these are to look at, but like really, if you want to treat your acne, this could lead to more scarring or it can lead to a little bit more inflammation. Yeah. Um, that it's a whitehead. Is it a good idea to pop that or should you leave it alone and just go for those active ingredients and let it calm naturally? What's your opinion on that? You should where possible. Like I know there's some of those pastules that are so like angry that they're about to like pop themselves and if they pop themselves that's fine um, but if you're putting any force in them I just would say it might cause more of a problem than ever and it can kind of be a catch-22 situation. I would say stick to a retinoid or kind of like a treatment that your GP or dermatology team are advising. Okay that's, yeah and if there are any cases where maybe an extraction is needed would you ever recommend that someone goes to a dermatologist instead? There are like cysts or nodules with acne and they could get like so thick or so bad that they do need to be extracted but that will be with experts who will do everything that they can um, to make sure that that is done in a safe way. They'll give you the antibiotics if you need it as preventative afterwards. Um, but I would say that's in like pretty severe cases and usually something that you'd go to your GP about anyway. So if a doctor is doing it under their guidance, absolutely, that's fine. But just don't try it at home would be my advice from there. Cool, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, I'm not looking to look at this already. Okay, um, this is quite chaotic. Like. I can't keep up with this. So we've got peppermint tea, I would say with the extract with the plant, like that's not going to go on the skin very well. It's going to be an irritant and yeah, essential oils on the skin is just a no. Lemon and honey, it's going to be sticky. I'd worry that that would cause too much stinging. I guess another question here is, in terms of your routines, this creator is using a lot of different products or different steps. Yeah. What are your thoughts on how people create their skincare routines? Is it good to be simple or is it good to have a 20 step routine? I think keep it simple because if you're trying loads of different things at exactly the same time, it could irritate your skin. So like if you're using so many actives, like it could cause irritation or dermatitis in some cases. I think as well, just to work out what works for you, it makes way more sense. And if you're using like an active or prescription strand thing, it's more than likely going to do all of the work. So you don't need to go to this crazy kind of routine level. I would not be recommending something this intense. There's products designed that we know that are out there that we can like get way better outcomes from. So this next video I think you'll be interested in. It's on one of your favorite topics. It's about SPF. Ooh. So let's watch it okay. and see what you think. Okay. Okay, so she looks like she's applied the right amount of sunscreen because um, it's like two finger lengths roughly. Okay, cool. I'm liking this. Typically, we do recommend you, that you do wear sunscreen every two hours. So if she's in somewhere, I think it's Australia because it says Bondi on the hashtags. But anyway, if you're in direct sunlight, every two hours is the recommendation for the likes of us that are in London. I'd say kind of like do it in the morning and then like avoid direct sunlight but you probably wouldn't want to wear SPF if you're close to a window because the UVA rays can still come in and it can still permeate. But you could take shades, you could wear a protective hat, like bucket hats are all the rage now, that will cover you. Avoid midday sun where you can, so like between 12 to three. Yeah. What happens if, for example, we've been experiencing really hot temperatures here in London, yeah. if you're sweating a lot, does that affect the amount of reapplications you should be doing? If you're getting that hot and if it's getting that intense, I'd be saying like try and get out of the sun as much as you can, especially if you've been to the gym or like sweating or else swimming's another big one as well. Loads of people go without SPF, go out for a swim outside and then end up burnt or else don't apply it afterwards. So I'd say apply a little bit before and then I definitely apply straight after as well to make sure that like you're covered from there. No, this one gets a thumbs up from me. I think this person's got the right idea. Um, the one thing is now they're using a sunscreen stick and like it's great to kind of use, it's better than nothing, but like the SPF lotions are generally the best ones because they're the easiest to apply. They could be using like one that says that like it's a one day application, like that is bull. Um, you still need to apply it every two hours. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That seems to make sense. So if people are dealing with acne, um, we know it can be very tempting to use homemade treatments. Mm. And this video is something that deals with that. So I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Okay. Okay. Ugh, yeah. 
Okay. The baking soda, honey, and apple cider vinegar, I'm pretty sure I don't have any evidence behind them. You could try it, might not have an effect, but I would say the honey is so sticky, it could clog your pores. The apple cider vinegar is an acid, and we haven't got like any regulation of that acidity. Putting the bicarbonate of soda and the apple cider vinegar actually neutralizes it, so you're basically just putting salt and honey on your face. So it's gonna sting. Even though I can see that that's done very well on TikTok, I didn't think kind of from a clinical trial point of view that's gonna stand. No, definitely not. Yeah. So one of the concerns a lot of our patients have is about fine lines, and especially maybe in expressive areas like your forehead. Mm -hmm. So this trend is basically a bit of a DIY at home one for dealing with those. Mm -hmm. So let's see what you think. Mm. Oh, I haven't seen these before. So are they medicated at all? I think in this case, these are not medicated. This is just a plain tape, I believe. There are some brands oh. available, but this looks like someone has bought a roll of tape in there, trying oh. this out. So like literally duct tape, kind of? I believe so. Oh, yikes. Okay, most of these lines happen naturally as we age, so any fine lines can be due to photo damage from UV. Um, but then the larger fine lines that this person, I think, is trying to address, usually it's kind of a natural part of aging. Harm-wise, you are peeling a bit of your skin off there, which we don't really recommend anyway. You can use an active like tretinoin, which will help address the fine lines. But ultimately, if someone wants to see a complete reduction on those lines, they're going to need to go to an aesthetician or a derm. It's a weird one. It's not like a complete absolute no, like this is going to rip your face off. But I just don't think it's really going to do anything. And so when it comes to maybe using active ingredients to deal with concerns like fine lines, how yeah. do those work to improve the appearance of them? Mm. So basically what it does is it kind of reverses the UV damage that's being done. It's called photo aging. So that's when like the UV is like exposed onto the skin. That can cause fine lines. It can cause a reduction in collagen. And then when you're using the retinoids, which is the one class of drugs that we know do work, it will help to increase the skin cell turnover. The skin will start to slowly but surely produce the amount of collagen that it's using. And we know from clinical trials that about 80% of people after six months see a really significant improvement. So generally I would recommend if you're trying to go for that kind of effect, give retinoids and a go. Um, I think it's one that we know works. Um, I don't think I'm going to see a study on duct tape helping with wrinkles on PubMed anytime soon. I imagine so. Yeah. Thank you for watching these videos today. It's been really great to hear your thoughts from a clinical point of view. Mm. From watching all of those, what's your main takeaway? Don't try anything like at home to make yourself. I know that sounds a bit kind of like slandering and stuff, but I think ultimately the things that are on the market that we know do work have been formulated with an awful lot of thought. Ooh, and no physical extraction or exfoliation. That's a big no-no as well. If you have any other questions that you would like us to react to or any questions in general, please leave us a comment and we'll see you next time. <laughs>